Nature. We see it all around us, and as you may know, it is an integral part of our world. Animals, plants, and even microscopic organisms are part of nature. They survive and thrive in environments in many different ways. In the harsh lands of the continent, you may also find animals and plants. Some that resemble things in our world, while others that are very bizarre. And when roaming in these lands, have you ever stopped to wonder, how do they survive? How do they adapt to the constant changes of this world? And what do they do in order to protect themselves from the many threats that roam? This is the purpose of this documentary. To catalog the behavior of the animals on the continent and to see how they live in these lands. And where is a better place to start than the humble beefalo? And let's start with something simple about beefalo. They are herbivores and feed primarily on grass. They are found in grasslands as a result of this. Their fur provides insulation in cold weathers and they use their large horns to fight off threats. Despite their large size and being heavy hitters, they can be overwhelmed very easily, which is why they are known to be in herds of up to 12 beefalo. Most of their day is spent eating and pooping, as the manure they produce serves as fertilizer for the grass, which will allow for food to grow at a faster rate. And at night, they sleep. Even if nothing much happens in the life of the beefalo, they still need to be aware as there are constant threats lurking about. And one of those threats is the common hound. Hounds, known for their group attacks and being highly aggressive, they too are a threat not only to survivors of the constant, but to beefaloes as well. These hounds are preparing an attack on this herd. They start an attack by having one hound watch the prey from a distance. And once it finds the perfect moment to strike, and when it realizes its prey spots them, it will give out a signal to the other hounds telling them to attack. Once the beefaloes realize what's going on, they will retaliate in an attempt to protect the herd so that it may live another day. They do this by attacking in numbers. These beefaloes were successful in defending their herd, and thus, their herd yet to live another day. As winter approaches, the beefaloes are getting ready for new younglings to enter the herd, as during late fall or early winter is the heat season for a beefalo. Heat season refers to a period during the year in which beefaloes will produce offspring to expand the herd and to replace lost beefaloes over the herd's lifespan. The entirety of spring is also a heat season for beefaloes. And look, new life has just been brought into this world. A baby beefalo. Baby beefaloes are very weak. Their fur and horns have not fully grown and thus they rely on their parents and other beefaloes for heat and protection. Due to them being weak, they try to avoid as much combat as possible by running away. They will also follow their parent wherever they go, even if it means they have to leave the herd. And everything I have said up to this point, from their anatomy, their herd-like mentality, and their ability to easily recover and expand, you may start to think on how is it possible that beefaloes don't litter the constant. Well, there is one threat I have not mentioned thus far, a threat that is much more dangerous than the average hound. <laughs> The mighty deer claws. Due to its size and its freezing ability, this allows the deer claws to attack multiple enemies at once, meaning the beefaloes can no longer rely on their strength and numbers to win fights. This baby beefalo stays away from the conflict, and it will soon have to make a choice. They run away from its home and its family to be safe from the frost giant's wrath and try and survive on its own, or to stay with the herd, hoping that they will survive and win this battle. But as the battle goes on, the choice to make is becoming increasingly clear. So, it makes its choice. It runs away from its home, 
in order to have better chances of survival rather than staying near the dying herd. It's unsure on where it's going, unsure if it will even live, and all it knows is that it will never see its family again. As you can see, the beefaloes lost this fight. Once the deer clouds realizes its job is done, it leaves. This may seem like the end of the herd, however, it still has one more job to do. The meat left behind from battle will slowly rot, and if left alone long enough, will serve as fertilizer for the soil, eventually causing a phenomenon known as a beefalo's paradise. A beefalo's paradise is a phenomenon in which the meat dropped from a recently killed herd will serve as fertilizer for the soil, and since there are no beefaloes to eat the newly grown grass, it can grow as much as it wants. A beefalo's paradise is also a good spot for new beefalo herds to arise. And look what has returned with a new friend. If all goes well for this beefalo, it will be able to grow a new herd from the ashes of the old, thus continuing the circle of life. Blabby wobble.